Michigan voters go to the polls this November and CMU Public Broadcasting again brings you Meet the Candidates. The election year series that gives you the chance to meet those seeking state and national office. Hello and welcome again to this edition of Meet the Candidates. I'm David Nicholas, joined this time by Fred Sprague. He is the Democratic candidate for the 33rd district seat in the Michigan Senate. Mr. Sprague, thanks for joining us. Welcome to our program. I thank you very much for inviting me, David. I appreciate that. We take the first few moments uh, each time we sit down with candidates for office, give them a chance to offer some of uh, the personal background and story, the experience you bring to the office and the campaign. Thank you, David. I, um, I'm not a politician. I'm certainly not a career politician. I uh, come from the world of education. I had 32 years in uh, public schools uh, as a science teacher and a uh, licensed professional counselor. And I retired a while ago from Chippewa Hills, but watched politics very, very closely. And uh, that explains why I'm here. The counties included in this district, it is the 33rd seat that we uh, said, but for those that don't have uh, the maps all memorized, or what counties, townships are we talking about here? Yeah. Uh, the 33rd, we call it the new 33rd, because after the 2010 uh, census, it's been reapportioned. So three of the counties are new to the 33rd. Clare County, Macosta County, and Gratiot County are brand new. And uh, they join Isabella County and Macosta, or in, uh, in Montcalm County, and that's the five uh, counties that uh, make up the new 33rd district. Major issues that you would identify for this uh, campaign going in, uh, either that you have identified or that voters are saying to you as you go door to door? Yeah, we, there's lots of issues. The reason uh, we got in this in our campaign uh, are really three. And the three issues we call our three E's. Uh, education, economics, and environment. And we, we hear these all echoed on the, uh, on the campaign trail, particularly at the doors we knocked. We've knocked literally thousands of doors in the five counties. <laughs> Environmentally, uh, one of the issues that we have in our district is the St. Louis uh, uh, Belsico or Michigan Chemical Plant. That's an ongoing disaster, and uh, uh, it still hasn't been cleaned up. Uh, example of what happens when uh, regulations fail or don't keep up with the times and uh, I spent some time down with our folks in the uh, Pine River Task Force. Uh, of course you probably all have read or heard the, uh, the, the ongoing studies that are happening down there. So uh, environmental is an issue and that extends really to all the, all the counties because uh, like any, uh, any part of Michigan we have a huge, huge uh, uh, hugely important environmental area. We have water, land, uh, certainly our air is important. Uh, there's going to be issues in mineral extraction that's going to come up in a short time, and uh, that's an issue that I'm, I'm concerned about. Economics is another issue. Uh, it seems recently our present uh, governor and uh, supporters in the legislature have moved away from being concerned about the middle class and uh, their issues tend to be uh, not friendly to the middle class I could say. It's certainly the last few tax cuts for, for big businesses have hurt our middle class and if you believe in trickle-down economics you will see that uh, you'll believe that this is going to work for us. Uh, I don't believe in that, and uh, I don't think anybody, any economic, ec economists do. So we have to be really careful with economics. We've got to grow our, <coughs> we got to grow our economy from the middle out, not from the top down. How would we do that then differently than, than the way That's, that you have seen to date then? What, what would I, be your I, proposal? A lot of it is tax policy. Uh, some of the ch tax policies that uh, our present governor and their, uh, their supporters have put in place have been pretty much anti-middle class, uh, anti-worker, uh, and that's how you grow the middle class. You make sure that those folks are, are, are represented in the, in the legislation you, you pass. Certainly the tax legislation with the pension tax has been hurtful to the middle class. Uh, many of the, uh, the, the laws that were passed in, in 2012 during the lame duck session with right to work have hurt our middle class. Uh, 
and it goes on and on. There's uh, like 350 boats or, that were taken during uh, that year that were, uh, were, were not really friendly to our middle class folks. The last issue is education, and that's the world I come from. Uh, I believe it's a time to put an educator down in <coughs> Lansing. I really believe that I bring something to Lansing that uh, other folks don't have. I was a teacher and a guidance counselor <coughs> for over three decades. Uh, it, it appears to me that our, our precious public schools are being squeezed. And we can really talk about all kinds of numbers. I know that uh, <coughs> Governor Snyder has numbers. Uh, Mark Schauer has numbers, and we can throw those back and forth, but uh, what I did is I went out and talked to, the, to superintendents, principals, teachers, and uh, I would suggest people don't worry about what the candidates are saying, go talk to your public schools. These, these schools are being squeezed in a way that, uh, you know, four or five more years, they'll, they'll be, be difficult for them to exist. Uh, the uh, Citizens Research Council just a while ago announced or said that uh, Michigan schools are operating at about 13% less funding than they had 10 years ago. I don't think uh, any institution can survive very long with that sort of funding issue. So those are our three, we call them our three E's and uh, we hear them reflected at the doors all the time. Pension tax comes up, education funding comes up. Uh, I was at a door in Ithaca a while ago with a teacher, and she's an elementary teacher, <laughs> and she talked about uh, her, cla her uh, class size increase, first grade teacher, up to 30 kids. Very difficult to teach with 30 first graders in a class. I talked to a lady in Alma. <clears throat> she has five children and uh, she got her list of things that she had to bring to school and she was telling me how much this cost. Uh, those were all costs that had been moved on to our uh, parents and away from the schools. Uh, very difficult for middle class uh, working, working families. Uh, those are all issues that I think are very important. We need to consider them. We need to uh, have somebody that will give voice to these issues in Lansing. <laughs> I can't go away without talking about roads. Uh, roads are absolutely uh, horrific, and I don't need to tell you or anybody in the audience that uh, in Michigan. We need to be actively working at fixing our roads, bridges, and other infrastructures too, uh, uh, certainly water plants and things like that. If we start with, uh, since it comes down to the question, of course, of money and, and funding, and we go to some of the economic proposals that uh, you have noted changing in the tax policy, perhaps reversing uh, the action on uh, some of the laws and, and uh, policies that have, have taken place over the last four years. Do the numbers add up? Do you have people advising you that say that then that is enough to divert to or uh, reapportion to to pay for the roads and the infrastructure or to address the concerns yeah. that you have in education? And yeah. if not, where does that additional money come from? Yeah, that's an excellent question, David. Uh, I have... Um uh, economics professor on my team, an accountant on my team, and uh, frankly, uh, you can't get them to agree on anything. <laughs> you, you, you lay accountants end to end and they'll disagree uh, completely. But uh, one of them, one of my advisors, uh, he's the let's get to the tax code thing. Let's look at the tax code. Let's rewrite it entirely. Let's look at those, the deductions that occur uh, throughout the tax code, and his belief is that if you could get the political will, if you could get the, the parties together and really look at the tax code, that Michigan would have a, uh, a, an easy time, he says, coming up with the money for this. Now, uh, the college professor says that's not right, that won't work, that we're all going to end up paying more, and uh, particularly the roads they're talking about. This uh, billion, billion and a half a year uh, is going to come from somewhere. And uh, my concern about the uh, road issue particularly is that when we fund it, David, we'll fund it uh, fairly across the board. That 
when we make a decision of where that money is going to come from, and most likely from any, any person I talk to, any of my advisors, <coughs> that money is going to be extra money. It's going to come from somewhere. And my concern is it comes fairly across the board. And uh, presently, our governor tends to look at taking the money from, that's needed from the middle class, the working poor, and use that to fund uh, what he thinks are his priorities. Uh, my advisors tell me that there's, there's ways to get, to get this money through the business tax structure. Uh, they feel like they've gone way too far with the billion eight that came out during, from the MPT. Uh, and they'd like to see some of that reinstituted to help pay for that. We'll see. It's going to be a huge thing uh, that's going to be argued either next year or maybe just settled during the lame ducks session that's coming up. Uh, I hope not. I hope it's argued better than just in a lame duck session. If we take the three primary issues that you identified at, at the outset and then and add to that also the overarching concern that we've had about roads and infrastructure, if you were to, in our last 30 seconds, and, and if you had that moment for the single voter, had the chance to address him or her as they get set to go to the polls, the message you would leave with them as they get set to vote. I'll say what I say at the doors to folks. Uh, I'm Fred. I'm running for state uh, senate. Uh, it's important that you get out and vote. It's important that your voice is heard in Lansing. It's important that when we make these, these decisions and funding and priorities in our state that you're represented. And I'll talk about those three E's, the things that I'm concerned about, energy or environment. We haven't talked about alternative energy, but that's part of environment. Uh, I, I want to talk about education. I want them to talk to me about, uh, about uh, economics. I want them to think about those three things. And I want them to see what happened in the last three and a half years. Uh, do they feel better about Michigan? in after this last three and a half years with Governor Snyder and his supporters. And if they don't, then they need to investigate what we're talking about, what my campaign is talking about, and, uh, and, and give us a look. And a lot of people respond to that. We're hearing even people who identify themselves as independents or Republicans uh, say, we, we want to hear what you have to say. And they really like or dislike the pension tax. Uh, the uh, Detroit Free Press talked about Michigan being the part of the, one of the ten worst states to retire in, and folks are, are pointing to that as an issue. The other is education. For taking all the time to address those concerns, those that you have and those that you've heard from the voters, we certainly appreciate the time you've taken to address those with us and the audience today. Thanks very much and good luck with the rest of the campaign. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me on your program. And thank you, as always, for your time and attention here for Meet the Candidates. We've been talking with Fred Sprague, the Democratic candidate for the 33rd District House seat in the Michigan Senate. We encourage all of you to get out and exercise your right to vote on November 2nd. Thank you for joining us for Meet the Candidates. CMU Public Broadcasting invited both major party candidates for this office to participate in this series. Remember to go to the polls on Election Day. Hello and welcome again to this edition of Meet the Candidates. I'm David Nicholas. We're joined this time by Ken Horn. He is a Republican candidate for the 32nd district seat in the Michigan Senate. Due to term limits, uh, this is an open seat for uh, this particular election cycle. Uh, Mr. Horn, very good to see you. Welcome back to our program. Well, it's great to be back. Uh, we give everyone the opportunity to uh, open up in the first moment or two with some of the personal background, hometown, and the experience that you bring to the campaign. Oh, I, I, Frankenmuth is my hometown, and I was a county commissioner back in 1992, ran a little restaurant. Uh, before that, I met my wife working at uh, the Bavarian Inn, uh, working for the Zender family. Uh, she looked very cute in a dirndl, and, and I, I got to know her pretty well. We uh, ended up having, uh, being married now 31 years. I have two kids, Kevin and Andrea, and just got my grandson here from Ecuador. Uh, that was uh, that was a very long 18-month process to get my daughter-in-law here from uh, from South America. Um, no one should have to go through that. 
and and so, but we're we're happy to have him. We celebrated uh, Liam uh, Liam Kenneth's first birthday uh, yesterday, in fact. Uh, so we uh, so we're good glad to have the family here all in Michigan. You are a former state representative, uh, served three terms in uh, the House. Um, that experience and, and what you are now finding from the voters for this run for the Senate, what are you, what, what from that time and, and now to this campaign and what are the voters telling you are the primary issues that you face? Interesting, you know, when I'm, I, you know, we spent a lot of time knocking on doors. That's a big part of this campaign. The, 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 the Senate seat is so much bigger, it's three times as big as my house district, so I have to cover a lot of areas, some new areas down in Genesee County that are new to me. But when I'm knocking on doors, I'm hearing less about issues. You know, the, you know there are some that have specific issues, and I'll get telephone calls about, you know, those, uh, you know, about roads and taxes and, and education and all of those things. But for the most part, it's, it's more generic. It's uh, one of the most common things that I'm hearing is, is representative. I'm 73 years old, and I don't recognize the country I grew up in. The, the, the people are feeling uh, like they lost control of something very precious. And, I, and this is more coming from the federal level, but Michigan is right in the, in, the, in, in the process of really growing. We have jobs available out there that nobody knows about, that nobody's talking about. Uh, I've got a thousand machinist jobs that are available to, a, you know, to workers in the Great Lakes Bay region of which a, a CMU is part of one of the counties in that. Uh, but those jobs are unfilled because we don't have skilled people. They all moved out of Michigan for jobs in other states some 10 years ago. And so we have to get those, uh, you know, those, those, those families back here working and growing middle class jobs and, and how do we do it? And that's really what we're talking about is jobs and, you know, and, and growing our economy again. But nobody's quite sure how to do it after all the turmoil we've been in, you know, in the, in the last decade or so. So it's, it's quite a challenge, but we want to make sure that people understand that, uh, that we are on the right track and, and things are getting better. We just need to, we just need to kind of keep keep that pace going for Michigan. Are there specific uh, proposals or, or policies that you would have in, when you refer to staying the course and, and letting these things work their way out for those for those jobs right now that uh, aren't filled, for those that may be still looking for the jobs that uh, have, have now not been there but now maybe are coming back into play with some of the economic turndown? What could we do to address that? Well, we, we took a, a huge step uh, in our in August when we passed Proposal 1, which eliminated the personal property tax. We protected local units of government, schools, libraries uh, in their funding, but we eliminated one of the dumbest taxes in America, th that on capital equipment. You know, people, you know, you know large businesses, small businesses uh, were, were shredding business plans because they, they couldn't afford the, the, the capital investments. And then you have companies like Dow Chemical and Corning and Next Tier, uh, Merrill Technology, that all have to walk hat in hand to their township officials and asking for for tax breaks, and then people wondering where, you know, where all this money is going to. That comes to an end. Uh, there's a little more certainty about about uh, about uh, tax policy, regulatory policy, energy policy right now. Where we really need to focus is training workers. Uh, Merrill Technologies in in my district. They're, they put together a, uh, a welding school because they couldn't find enough workers. Uh, next year, engineers and skilled trades, that's their, their biggest challenge. And so finding STEM workers, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, CMU is, is doing their part in, in the engineering side of this as well as uh, some of the other trainings that they do. But our local colleges really need to step up. And so the, the focus doesn't necessarily have to be all on a four-year college as well. We just want, need to make sure that, that young people know that there are careers out there available to them. Uh, career, college, boy, I, you know, I, I don't care where you, where you head. I just need you to know that these opportunities are there uh, and, and how do we get them uh, to, the, to these opportunities. So it, it kind of changes the way that we teach in our, our K-12 through system. And we talked a little bit about this uh, almost two years ago. As I was leaving, I created uh, four years ago what I, I, I termed the Curious Student Project. Are we graduating curious students from our, our, our K through 12 system? 
Do they know what's out there? Do they know how to get to it? Are they entrepreneurs? Uh, it's not so much about uh, what we're teaching them. It, it, nowadays, it's about how we're teaching them. Hands-on learning is going to be very, very important. Is something like that, uh, other initiatives, or, or even if we look at the, the change, the very strong change in, in the tax policy, um, with that personal property tax now being taken out of the equation, does that jump start it, or is it still a matter of, of a time uh, waiting then for all of these factors to, to come together for, for those that are looking for that economic turnaround in, in those districts outside as, as 94 is, uh, or excuse me, as, as uh, your former House district and then also the Senate district mm -hmm. is outside of uh, the real big, largest urban centers that we see downstate. The biggest thing that we're worried about is the tax policy if we maintain it. If, if you remember, uh, in 2006 we eliminated the single business tax. Uh, to, you know, Then we had the Michigan business tax. In 2011 we eliminated the MBT and now we've got the, the corporate income tax. We, we flipped the major business tax in this state on its head three times in five years. What we need to, uh, what we need to kind of promise the, the system is that we won't do that again. That there, there's some certainty for the, for the future. Uh, regulatory policy. We just need to get, uh, get ourselves off of the backs of, uh, you know, of job providers. Uh, one of the things that I'm really worried about, because I chaired the House Energy Committee, is the what we refer to as the 2015 energy train wreck. Uh, the you know the, the EPA rules and regulations that are going to be closing uh, power plants down and, and not allowing allowing us to build brand new. Uh, even our, our Public Service Commission is talking about rolling blackouts in Southeast Michigan. No homeowner wants to walk in, uh, you know, a, in, you know after, uh, after recital at night and, and flip a switch and not have it come on, or no business wants to, a, wants to open up a factory if they're worried about not having enough energy to, uh, you know, to fire up their machines. So the energy is really a, a big thing. It doesn't pull very well, but it's very critical to us. And, and so we want to make sure that uh, all of these steps, all of these components are in place to, uh, to grow manufacturing because that is where the middle class jobs are. And then we need to train people in, a, in part two of that for those particular jobs. These are advanced jobs. This isn't your old fashioned factory job. These are high tech jobs that require a lot of math and, and a strong work ethic. And we, in, in, in this region in particular, we got a lot of folks that work hard they just need to learn uh, what kind of jobs are out there and how to get to them. Do you propose then, uh, is, is there a need to strengthen those training programs or as, as I hear the, the undoing of some of these regulations, is, is yours a candidacy that says more of a, of a hands off to let these things go forward or is there further implementation policy wise, uh, program and initiative wise that you would be putting forward to address these concerns? Well, I, I think in terms, of, uh, in terms of tax policy and regulatory policy, we're right where we need to be now. We have clean water, clean air. We we, we can uh, we can grow our economy from here. Uh, we do need to work on the, on the energy policy. So now it's back to uh, education, uh, roads and bridges, transportation is going to be vital. You know, getting people back and forth to work, uh, getting getting goods and, and supplies back and forth from you know from the manufacturers. And so in transportation, public safety is going to be another issue. And as I, as I, I said over the last two years in, in Saginaw County, we can't arrest our way out of a crime problem. You know, that we, you know we need to, to change the hearts of, you know, of, of people that are, are you know, ultimately uh, that commit crimes and get to them very early. That's why I believe in early, uh, early childhood development, birth to five programs. I was just at a, uh, at a Great Start Collaborative uh, breakfast this morning talking about how to get, uh, get the kids between the ages of zero and five years old, you know, in, in teaching parents how to be parents. Because when we do that, when we bond the parents back with their children again, instead of separating them through JET programs, job education training programs, in order to re receive cash assistance, we drive families apart and then we create nonprofit corporations to try to bring them back together again. It's a crazy mixed up world right now. And we just need parents to know that how important it is to, you know, to, to raise good kids, to read to them. You know, to, you know, to feed them, to clothe them. You know, this is your life. This is what you're on this earth for. And, you know, and when kids are loved and wanted, 
they 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 have a more tendency to to graduate from uh, graduate from school and go on to to great careers and and by the way they stay out of our jails and prisons and so so you know public safety is vital to us uh, education roads and bridges that all falls under this this new part of economic development if you look at all of those concerns uh, dealing with as you said people talking less about issues and, and more about um, their, their approach to the lifestyle in, in this area of the country, in this part of the state. The State House District, now this Senate District, do you have those couple of moments, the last 30 seconds we have, to give that message to the voter, him or her, going to the polls? What's that last word you want to leave with them? Oh, uh, I, I think, you know, review uh, not just my race, but all of the races in the area. You know, I mean, you can ignore a probably 90% of the stuff that you, you see coming at you in terms of uh, advertising. Look for the positive in candidates. Uh, look for the candidates that offer a positive message. Uh, this is still a, a, you know, a very uh, hard-working, uh, family-oriented district, the 32nd is, and, and, and I, I, I think I, Everything I do, you know, kind of uh, translates into appealing to, you know, to the, you know, kind of the, the true nature of this district. So I hope that I've got a, I've got a little less than a month and a half to, you know, to, you know, to gain the trust of the voters out there. I hope you take a very close look at the campaign, and if you like what you see, and I work hard enough, I hope to gain their support and their vote. Well, for taking the time to address all of those concerns and those that you've heard from the voters, we appreciate your time and good luck with the rest of the campaign. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for uh, stopping in with us as well. This has been Meet the Candidates. We've been talking with uh, former state representative Ken Horn. He is uh, currently the Republican candidate for the 32nd district seat in the Michigan Senate, an open seat this election. We encourage all of you to get out and uh, use your right to vote on Tuesday, November 4th. This has been Meet the Candidates, a production of CMU Public Broadcasting. Both major party candidates were invited to participate in this series. For a complete listing of the air dates and times for this series, go to our website, wcmu.org.